Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This is Satoru Iwata from Nintendo. In this installment of Nintendo Direct, which we are broadcasting simultaneously worldwide, we would like to deliver directly to you updates on games that will be launching this year. I know that many of you are looking forward to E3 in June. We are preparing a separate Nintendo Direct that is focused on future Wii U contents that will air around the time of E3. Together with the news that we will share with you today, these should help you to understand more about what is on the horizon for Nintendo. So let's begin. First, I have a game from Sega to announce. It's the latest in the Mario and Sonic series. The upcoming Olympic Winter Games will take place in a city called Sochi. Do you know where this is? According to the world map, it's around here in southern Russia. Sochi is known as a resort town facing the Black Sea. While Russia is often known as a place of extreme cold, Sochi is relatively warm. I thought it would be much colder until I looked into it. But that's enough geography for now. Let's have a look at the game. This is a Wii U game, and as you can see, the graphics are enhanced in comparison to earlier games in the series. The characters are detailed, and environment effects such as snow and ice are realistically presented. Additionally, the game uses the Wii Remote Plus controller so it allows for very intuitive gameplay. In addition to returning events, such as skiing and snowboarding, we have added figure skating pairs and an event that is new for the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games snowboarding slope style. Some of the events utilize the Wii U gamepad as well. For example, in curling, the player must draw line directly on the ice link displayed on the gamepad to share their strategy with the other players. In the biathlon event, which is a combination of cross-country skiing and rifle shooting, the player must switch between the Wii Remote Plus and gamepad depending on the situation. In addition to these official events of the Olympic Games, the game also offers what we are calling dream events as well, where stages are built in the world of Sonic and Mario, and you can do dynamic moves not possible in real life. We also have a mixed event, which combines sports such as skiing, snowboarding, skating, and bobsleigh in one race. In this event, you can experience a race that is not possible in actual events at the Olympic Games. Please stay tuned for launch timing and more details on the game. I have some additional information on Sonic the Hedgehog that I would like to share with you. Today, I would like to announce that we have entered into a worldwide partnership with Sega on the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. The next game in the series, Sonic Lost World, is a brand new action-adventure platforming game that will launch exclusively on Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. We'll have more details on this game prior to E3. Now, I would like to talk briefly about Game and Wario. From June 28, players all across Europe will be able to enjoy a new kind of wacky Wario fun on Wii U. There are 16 games for which you use the Wii U gamepad in many unique ways. 
And all you need is just one gamepad. And all the players enjoy all the game without a Wii Remote. Please take a look at this trailer and see for yourself. You can find out more on the development of Game and Wario by checking out our new Iwata Asks interview after the presentation. Resident Evil Revelations, which originally released for Nintendo 3DS last year, is headed to Wii U soon with updated graphics, unique control using the gamepad, and new game content. In the Wii U version of the game, in a new difficulty mode called Infernal, enemies and items are placed in new locations, and even for those that played the game on Nintendo 3DS, this will feel like a totally different experience. Also, Capcom has added the popular characters Hank and Rachel to the action-focused raid mode. There are also new controls using the gamepad. While using the TV as the main screen without interrupting gameplay, players can view the gamepad to display the map and change items on the touch screen so that you can immerse yourself in the world of Resident Evil without interrupting your game progress. You can also play the full game with just the gamepad in off-TV mode, or play with the Wii U Pro Controller. The game is Miiverse compatible as well, so you can enjoy unique gameplay features such as death message and creature voice. The game is launching in stores and in Nintendo eShop on May 24th. We recently launched a downloadable demo version in the Nintendo eShop. So, I hope you can try it out. Now, I have more information to share with you about new Super Luigi U. This downloadable content for New Super Mario Bros. U symbolizes the year of Luigi, which is happening throughout 2013. Since Mario does not appear in the game, Players can enjoy multiplayer by playing as Luigi, Blue Toad, Yellow Toad, and Nabbit. Some of you may not know the Nabbit character, so let me refresh your memory. In New Super Mario Bros. U, Nabbit 
was a character that stole items from Toll's house, and players would chase him in different stages. This time around, you can actually play as Nabit. Nabit has different abilities from Luigi and the Toads. His speed and jump are the same as the others, but he cannot power up even if he collects items. Instead, he won't take damage when he touches enemies. Nabit is only available as a playable character in multiplayer gameplay, so please select him if you find 2D Mario gameplay to be challenging. New Super Luigi U will be released as downloadable content for New Super Mario Bros. U in Nintendo eShop on June 20th. As we mentioned before, the game offers 82 updated courses, unique Luigi gameplay, and an additional playable character in Nabit. It's a completely different experience from New Super Mario Bros. U. For this game, I understand that some of you may want to play New Super Luigi U even if you don't already own New Super Mario Bros. U. Since it is the year of Luigi, we've decided to release a special standalone version of New Super Luigi U that does not require the New Super Mario Bros. U game as a limited time offer. This will be available on July 26th as a package product. You can either download New Super Luigi U as downloadable content for New Super Mario Bros. U from the Nintendo eShop or purchase the package standalone version. Since the contents are the same, you can make a decision on which version to get based on your internet connection status and whether you already own New Super Mario Bros. U. Now, I have another game for which we can share a launch date. It is the Wonderful 101 from Platinum Games, which will come to Europe on August 23rd. More details about the game will be released gradually between now and launch. Please stay tuned. I'm excited to see the finished product from Mr. Kamiya and Platinum Games. Next, I'd like to discuss more on Pikmin 3 for Wii U. In this game, instead of Olimar, who was the main character in the previous Pikmin titles, there are three new main characters. Their names are Alf, Brittany, and the Captain Charlie. They are from planet Koppai, which is facing its doomsday due to a lack of food. They set out on their adventure in search of food that can be returned to Koppai. Due to an accident while traveling, they crash land and encounter mysterious creatures called Pikmin. With their help, the three travelers start exploring. Their mission is to collect fruit that can be their new food resource while exploring the planet with the goal of bringing the seas back to their home. As the explorers found from their preliminary research, there were various kinds of fruit there, but it was much larger than expected. They decided to use the Pikmin's help to carry the fruit back to the spaceship. After extracting the seeds, fruit can be converted to juice and can act as a food for the player characters as they explore the planet. If they don't have enough food, they can continue their exploration. They must use the limit time of each day to explore for fruit. Night on the planet is dangerous, so you can only explore from dawn to dusk. 
During this time, it is important to use the different color Pikmin skills. Players can divide activities among the different characters and explore separate areas with different groups of Pikmin in order to progress with their exploration. Once you get the hang of it, you can complete tasks within a shorter time frame. Also, if you make mistakes while you play, you can replay the day or revert to an earlier section of the game. The fun of starting over is that you can tap into what you learned from your last play session to more efficiently complete tasks. In the first Pikmin game, the player had to start over again and again to figure out the most efficient way to complete the exploration of the planet in a limited time. But in this game, there is no big limitation in terms of the days. So it is more accessible for those that have not played previous Pikmin games. At the same time, experienced players can enjoy the game deeply because the more you play, you get better with the new Pikmin and new courses. And this is another one of your assets in surviving the adventure. In Pikmin 3, the gamepad becomes a handy information terminal called the cop pad. As you can see, the area you have currently explored is shown on the map. You can see where the Pikmin and player characters are located. Also, by scrolling the screen with your finger, you can see the details of each area on the TV screen. Additionally, if you scroll the map while selecting one of the player characters like this, you can move them to a specific location automatically. With the cup pad, you can view the overall map and grasp what each character and Pikmin are doing on their assigned tasks. At the end of the day, you can see the replay of the entire day. Fast forwarding and rewinding replay footage to review a day and the number of remaining Pikmin is a part of your strategy to get ready for the next day. I'd like to share some information on the game's control as well. We are preparing a few types of game controls that players can choose from. Play control using the gamepad is similar to playing the previous Pikmin games on the GameCube. The game is also compatible with the Wii U Pro Controller. If you have played Pikmin 2 for Wii, you'll know that the Wii Remote and Nunchak Control scheme makes it easy and intuitive to decide where you want to use Pikmin. With Wii Remote Plus, these controls have become more comfortable. We are mainly focusing on this control scheme today. Also, you can enjoy the full game without the TV by just using the gamepad. You can also play the game with Wii Remote and Nunchak using the gamepad as a monitor. With the help of Pikmin and the cop pad, can Alf, Brittany, and Charlie saved their home planet, Koppai. Today, I shared updates on the game's story mode, but another time, we will be able to share more on challenge mode and the game's multiplayer modes. Pikmin 3 launches on July 26th. Thank you for watching. That is all that I have to share today. See you around that time of E3.